Hello, I'm Simon Roberts. I'm a solicitor at Field Seymour Parks in Reading, and this is my video blog. Today I want to talk about Foxtons. The 10th of July 2009 was not a good day in court for Foxtons. The High Court pronounced not only that Foxton's standard lettings terms for landlords contained unfair conditions, but also that such conditions were, in the words of the judge, severely camouflaged, somewhat buried, and a time bomb. So how was Michael Brown, chief executive of Foxton's, able to claim the decision as a victory for both sides in the case? Well, oddly enough, I can see where Mr Brown is coming from. But before I get further into that, I want to give a brief explanation of the background to the case and of the decision itself. The lettings department at Foxton's finds tenants for landlords, and it deals with all the admin necessary for getting the tenants in and the rent paid. This involves the usual stuff like references, the inventory, the tenancy agreement itself, and the check-in. And Foxton's, like most other lettings agents, get paid for their efforts by charging commission on the rent. And the amount of that commission, where Foxton's don't manage the property, is 11%. But 11% of what exactly? Well, under the Foxton's agreement, the landlord is liable at the beginning of the tenancy to hand over 11% of the total rents arising during the term of the tenancy agreement. But it doesn't end there. If the tenancy is extended or renewed, the Foxton's terms stipulate that the landlord continues to be liable for commission at that rate on all future rents, and this continues indefinitely. How else are Foxton's going to pay for all those parking tickets on their minis? Anyway, the contractual obligation on landlords to pay uh, commission on renewal rents got the Office of Fair Trading all hot and bothered, and they made an application to the court for a declaration that such provisions were unlawful under a set of regulations called the Unfair Terms in Consumer Contracts Regulations 1999. And what do you know? The Office of Fair Trading won. The High Court decided that the provisions in the Foxton's Agreement requiring commissions on renewal rents were unfair and therefore unenforceable. So what now for Foxton's and the rest of the lettings industry? Well, there's a good deal of technical legal analysis in the High Court judgment. It runs to over 30 pages. But I think it boils down to this. In essence, there were three things about the Foxton's agreement that the judge didn't like. First, he didn't like the fact that the 11% commission rate stayed constant for an indeterminate term, and that this was regardless of whether the letting agent was actually doing anything to earn it. Secondly, he didn't like the fact that these provisions were camouflaged in the Foxton's agreement through a combination of small print and a total absence of information in its marketing material. Thirdly, the judge didn't like the dodgy and obscure drafting, those are my words by the way, used in the uh, Foxton's uh, agreement. Um, Whilst one can understand that Foxton's would want to maximise its revenues uh, in what I assume is a very slick lettings operation, it does amaze me that Foxton's, or perhaps its lawyers, managed to make such a hash of the drafting of such key provisions. My concluding thoughts are these. I think there's some justification for Mr Brown putting a positive spin on the result. Certainly the court did not rule against renewal commissions per se, and uh, for that the lettings industry will be thankful. It seems to me that if lettings agents can address the principal objections raised by the judge to the Foxton's terms and conditions, that is to fix the commission on renewal rents at a reasonable level, i.e reduce the commission on renewals. Secondly, to give appropriate prominence to such provisions in the standard documents and also in marketing material. And thirdly, to ensure that such provisions are drafted in plain and intelligible language, then that should do the trick. But before you get carried away, I should just say that these are my personal views. 
and that before you make any changes to your standard documents, you should take proper legal advice.